G'day, this is Mr. Thompson, and uh, I'm going to show you how to use Fusion to design your CO2 dragster. This is part one, and in this part, I'll show you how to create the balsa blank. Uh, and then in subsequent parts, we'll uh, sh shape that blank and create wheels and assemblies and drawings. Uh, but let's start uh, with the blank. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to, with my data panel open, so these nine dots here, they open and close the data panel. Uh, I'm going to go back to home um, so that I can see all my projects and I'm going to create a new project. So a, a new project is a um, basically a folder that all of the all related designs can be stored in. So I'm going to call this folder CO2 Dragster and hit enter. And once the blue circle stops spinning, there we go, I'm going to double click uh, so that I'm now inside that folder. So any design that I create and save now will be saved in that folder. Okay, I'm gonna close the data panel. Now, because my dragster has multiple components, it has a body, it has axles, it has wheels, um, all of those things are gonna be separate components. So I'm not just gonna create a sketch um, uh, under this top level component, I'm gonna create a new component for the body underneath. So under assembly or under assemble, I'm going to click on a uh, new component there and I'm going to call it uh, the dragster body. Or that'll do. Uh, click OK. And now you can see on the browser here that, in fact, let me just save this. That's my top level component. That's my dragster body. And under here, we will also have other uh, components like wheels and axles. Let's, let's save everything before we go any further. So this is going to be our CO2 dragster number one, because I'll probably do more than one, and uh, save that. Okay, and you can see that's changed the name of the design to CO2 dragster one, version zero, and actually it's just gone and done weird things with my browser, so I'll just... Uh, put that back there. Okay, so on my browser there, CO2 Dragster version 1, and there's my Dragster body. That's the component which is selected and activated. That circle with a dot means that when I create a sketch now, it'll actually be in that particular component, which is good. So let's do that. I'm going to create a sketch. So click on uh, that either create sketch or, or just click up there to create a sketch. And it gives me... Well, we can just get rid of that. Ah, try again. Create a sketch. Um, it gives me a choice of the planes. I'm going to select this vertical plane here to put my sketch on. And I'm going to just draw with some lines. I'm just going to draw the shape. And I'm going to worry about the dimensions later. So let's do that. I'm going to, uh, I can either click on line there or I can go create line like that. Or I can just use L on my keyboard. So... I'll start drawing a line. I'm going to come down here and click and release. Uh, come up to about here. It doesn't matter how far. Click and release. Come down to here somewhere. Again, doesn't matter how far. Click and release. Uh, click and release. Click and release. And there we go. Um, now, uh, these lines are blue, which means uh, that I haven't got dimensions or constraints on them yet. So I'll do that now. I'm going to press Escape. Um, so that I'm no longer drawing lines. And now I'm going to do some dimensioning. So I can either create a sketch dimension or use D on the keyboard. Um, so let's do that. And I'm going to click and release there. Come over here. And I'm going to make that, um, let's see, we'll make that uh, 72 millimeters, if I remember correctly. Um, now, um, over this side, I'm going to click and release. I'm going to make that side there 20 millimeters, like that. And uh, that side there, click and release and come down here, that is 305 millimeters. So they're, they're the dimensions of our block. So that's our side on view. Now you'll notice that those lines have gone black, which means that shape, that sketch, is fully constrained. Okay, um, so let's... Um, Finish the sketch, and now I'm going to extrude. So I can create an extrusion, or I can just press E on my keyboard. 
So create an extrusion because there's only one shape there in the sketch. Uh, it was selected by default. If it wasn't selected, I could do it, select it by clicking there and then clicking um, the shape that I want to extrude. And I'm going to just click on that home um, icon there so that I can see what's going on with my extrusion. Now, if I extrude that way, it's going one direction. I actually want it to be symmetric because I want it to go both, both sides, out to the left and out to the right. And um, I want to measure the, I want to set the measurement, I want to set the whole, the whole width there. So from that side all the way to that side needs to be not 20 millimeters, but 42 millimeters. Um, so, and I'm going to click OK on that. And there is my blank. Now I need to put a hole in the back. So to do that, I'm going to draw a circle and then extrude the circle uh, to make a hole. So I'm going to click on sketch. And instead of choosing one of these planes, I'm going to choose the back of the uh, blank that I've drawn. And I'm going to click on circle or create circle, center diameter circle, or I could use C on the keyboard. And I'm going to draw a circle here. And I'm going to make my circle three quarters of an inch is the correct diameter. Uh, so I'm going to do three quarters and double quotes means inch. So if I do three quarter inch like that, um, press enter and it converts it to millimeters for me. Three quarters of an inch is the same as 19.05 millimeters. I'm just going to grab that and pull it out of the way a little bit so it doesn't clutter everything up. Um, okay, at the moment, my circle is very movable um, and I, I need to constrain it. That's why it's got a, it's got a uh, blue border. So I'm going to come up here under constraints and I'm going to use this constraint here. So I, I can either click here or I can click here, horizontal vertical constraint, and I'm going to select the center of the circle, or I think I just unselected it. Select the center of the circle and select that origin there. And now if I press escape uh, and try to move my circle, you can see I can move the circle, but it's constrained to be vertically in line with the origin. Now I'm going to fix the distance between there and there. I'm going to do that by dimensioning. So D on my keyboard, D for dimension, and I'm going to click, um, uh, let's see, again, click there and click there, and then come out here and click out there, and that needs to be 32 millimeters. Okay, so that's black, that's good, that's fully constrained now. I'm ready now to extrude, so E for extrude. And uh, I might have to zoom in a little bit with my wheel mouse. Zoom into here. And uh, let's see, I'm going to click uh, click on there and zoom back out again a little bit. Now, you can see that's, if I extrude that way, it's going to create a join extrusion. It's going to create a cylinder and join it to that. But I don't want that. I want to extrude it back in this way and make a hole. So that's going to cut. Can you see that's a cut extrusion now? And that needs to go, well, that actually needs to go 50 millimeters. So if I type 50 millimeters, you can see, oh, it went the wrong way. So um, uh, I'm going to double click here. This is my timeline. That's the extrusion that I just did. So if I double click on that, it takes me back to that extrusion. And you know what? I need to do not 50 millimeters. I need minus 50 millimeters because it needs to go that way. And it needs to be a, not a join, but a cut. So if I click OK now. There we go. Now, I'd like to be able to see that hole there, so I'm going to come down to here to Display Settings, Visual Style, and I'm going to choose Shaded with Visible, oh no, Shaded with Hidden Edges. If I do that, now see I can see those hidden edges, and I can see uh, that that's what my blank looks like. All right, that's pretty good. Uh, there's one more thing I'm going to do. I'm just going to quickly come in here, and I'm going to open up my component and I'm going to see that there's a there's one body that I've created and there's some sketches that I drew. Now I should name my bodies and my sketches. It's good practice to do that. It makes it a lot easier to find the right body and the right sketch later on when your design gets quite complicated. So if I click here and then click click it well it's, it's not a double click it's click once and then click again um, so I can rename it and I'm going to call that uh, I'm going to call that drag, oh, no, I'll call that the, yeah, well, actually, I'm going to call it the dragster body. 
Um, actually, I've given it the same name as the component, and that's okay. There's only one body in this component, um, so giving them the same button name uh, is not going to hurt anything. Um, come down here, this sketch here, so you can see it being highlighted when I hover over that. There were two sketches. That's the sketch that I did first. So if I click and click again, and I'm going to call that uh, the balsa blank, well, blank elevation. Elevation means side view. So that's the balsa blank elevation. That's the, the, the side view that I used to turn into a body. And this sketch here, well, that sketch was the the hole for the canister, wasn't it? So I'm going to call that the canister, canister hole. That's the sketch for the canister hole. So now all my parts are labeled. Uh, that's good. I'm going to save my uh, work. Now I'm going to give it a description. I'm going to say uh, the blank. Oh, the blank is finished and go OK, like that. Now, um, now if I have a look back here under my data panel, um, we should be able to see, there we go, actually, before I do that, see that's gone to version 2, and that's gone to version 2, because I've saved it twice now. If I have a look at my data panel, we can see that it's version 2, uh, and in fact, let me, let me get that out of the way, here's my data panel, it's version 2, if I click here, it, I can actually see the different versions. So that was my when the item was first created, and that was when my blank was finished. And if I did some wool work and saved it again, I should give it another name when I save it so that I can see at what stage I was at. And I can go back to these older versions if I need to. Okay, uh, that will do. The next video, we're going to uh, make this blank look something a little bit more like a dragster body.